The dreaded mal de mer is a sickness of the brain, not the stomach, and can most simply be described as the result of conflicting signals fed to the brain from various parts of the body. For example, if the boat heels to starboard and the motion analyzing part of the brain sorts out these signals from the inner ear and tells us that we're leaning, as our eyes look forward, everything on the boat seems to be in line with our body, we don't have to see ourselves leaning. There are three systems at work whose function it is to maintain balance. The first is the vestibular system, the inner ear, which determines balance. The vision system supplies important information that can override the vestibular system. Ice skaters, for example, can concentrate on a spot while spinning and not get dizzy. The third system consists of position sensors in the joints and tendon of the neck. As the vestibular system starts to pick up signals about the boat's movement, our vision system as we stand on deck looking at a fixed object on the horizon confirms that yes, there is motion and the brain's motion analyzer sets about accepting the motion. If it indicates the motion is reasonable, the body adjusts to the motion and no seasickness develops. We have attained our sea legs. However, if the vision cannot override the vestibular system, say when we're concentrating on a task close to the body, such as navigation, then a conflict of signals arises and seasickness often wins the battle. The fact that a boat will go through six distinct motions does not help the brain sort out all the stimuli. A boat can travel in three linear directions, surge, sway, and heave, and three rotary directions, roll, pitch, and yaw. Sufferers of seasickness or mal de mer should be encouraged to stay on deck and stay active. If boaters can't stay on deck, they should lie below on the center line of the boat with their eyes closed. Lying down on the center line lessens the actual movement of the boat. As in all maladies, prevention is preferable to treatment. And although seasickness is not related to diet and other external stimuli, anything that will make the body feel nauseous will hasten the effects of seasickness. So while sailing or preparing to sail, people should avoid such things as excessively greasy foods, very spicy foods, and large quantities of alcohol and lack of sleep. Strange, sharp smells such as cooking odors, alcohol, diesel, hydrogen gas from the battery, and stale water from the icebox can upset the delicate balance of sensory equilibrium. Here are some of the symptoms of not taking proper care. Drugs, both prescription and over-the-counter, can be used to combat the effects of seasickness. Most are preventative and should be taken at least a few hours prior to departing. Too many people, however, take drugs only to find out they react to the cure. So before taking any drugs on the boat which is moving, a new remedy should be tried on shore. Any reaction can be distinguished from the symptoms of seasickness. Treatment and prevention should also be started a day before departure to allow the body to adjust to any drugs. Most remedies have side effects which make us feel either drowsy or stimulated. And for this reason, many treatments are used in pairs, one offsetting the effects of the other. On a boat, there's nothing worse than seasickness. And many who claim they have never been seasick simply have not displayed the final symptom, vomiting. Most have had the headaches, the increased salivation, and the general malaise. Most people have an ability to adapt and convince the motion analyzer at the base of the brain that this movement is all right. These are the people who can shake off the symptoms. Others carry the symptoms for the duration of the passage, but recover fully as soon as setting foot on shore. The key to success with seasickness seems to be knowing your body's limits and preparing for the worst. Once stricken, a sailor should be kept active, and steering turns out to be one of the best remedies. Rest and blocking out some of the external stimuli might greatly reduce the effects of motion, but if all else fails, it's a wise skipper who alters course to put in to the closer port to save a crew from extended suffering.